Um, the January 2017 intelligence community assessment concluded that Moscow's influence campaign followed a Russian messaging strategy that blends covert intelligence operations such as cyber activity with overt efforts from government agencies, state-funded media, third-party intermediaries, and paid social media users or trolls. Uh, we now have a much better sense of how that manifests itself. Um, on Facebook, we learned of 470 fake accounts tied to the Kremlin-linked uh, Internet Research Agency or Troll Farm. From these accounts, more than 80,000 individual pieces of organic content were produced, such as posts to which at least 126 million Americans were exposed. Roughly 3,400 paid ads were purchased by the Troll Farm uh, over the period from June uh, 2015 to August 2017, ads which over 11 million Americans saw during the campaign season. On Twitter, roughly 2,700 human-linked Twitter users connected to the Kremlin troll farm who tweeted one and a half million times, and 36,000 Russia-linked bots uh, or automated accounts were also found. These bots tweeted one and a half million times, which accounted for nearly three, 300 million views. Uh, with respect to uh, Google and YouTube, uh, roughly 1,100 Kremlin link videos were posted to YouTube for about 300,000 views. Uh, and you've been able to identify over 5 billion views of propaganda vi videos by Russia today, or RT. Uh, the question I'd like to ask you all, uh, really a couple of questions. Um, one that is very Russia-specific, uh, one that is of broader significance. Um, part of what made the Russian social media campaign uh, successful, part of uh, uh, Mr. Stretch, as you point out, why the Russians were sophisticated in social media, is that they understood that the algorithms that you use uh, tend to accentuate cont content that is either fear-based or anger-based. Uh, that helps it pick up an audience and go viral and be amplified. Um, this is a, a, a concern not only in terms of foreign uh, manipulation, uh, but also just in terms of the degree to which these algorithms which are designed to attract our attention and keep our eyes, eyes focused on the platform for advertising purposes may also have the unintended consequence of uh, widening divisions among our society, of polarizing people, uh, because what ends up percolating the top of our feeds tends to be things that we were looking for or things that the algorithm, algorithms think will capture our attention to a greater degree. Uh, so my, my question is, what uh, corporate obligation, societal obligation, do you think your companies have vis-a-vis -vis both of these issues, uh, the foreign manipulation of your platforms, but also, more broadly, the fact that algorithms designed to attract our attention may also have the unintended consequence, but very real consequence, of pitting American against American in a way that the Russians so capably uh, manipulated. Um, so if you could each address that question, uh, and the second question is, do you have the historic data uh, such that you would be able to analyze uh, the Trump campaign advertising uh, and, uh, and its campaign's organic content with that produced by the Russian social media farms uh, and analyze whether in its targeting or its audience uh, there was any sophistication in that overlap? I'll start. Um, we we obviously take both of these these issues very seriously, and I think you'll hear throughout uh, our conversation today that our focus, um, while we do look at content and we have rules that that talk about content, you know, when it turns violent, when behavior on Twitter turns violent, we we have the greatest successes in protecting users and the platform when we look at behavior and the information that we see behind Twitter accounts. So we talk about things like automated. Uh, malicious accounts because w what we've seen especially in this investigation is that these malicious actors need need they need ears they need eyes they need to be able to sort of reach an audience and the way they get that audience without being able to grow organically is to use automated uh, activity on the platform and that's where we're focused and that's where we've gotten a lot better so over the last year we've improved by almost uh, 2x our ability to to challenge uh, accounts. We're challenging 4 million accounts every week to determine if they're real. We take down and block 
450,000 suspicious logins every day. So we're, we're making a concerted effort to, to stop this type of activity on the platform, to give an amplification and a, a voice to, to the people who are trying to, to abuse our system. Um, as to the IRA and the uh, Russian-based troll farms that we've been able to identify to date, uh, we do have that information and can share it with your staff. Mr. Stretch and uh, Mr. Walker. Uh, gentlemen, with respect, being respectful to the other members of the committee, I'd ask you to be really brief on your responses, please. We're out of these questions. Uh, out of time. I, I will be brief. So, yes, we do have an obligation to, to prevent foreign interference in the election. We take that obligation seriously. There are more details in my written testimony as to how we're attempting to discharge that. With respect to the algorithm question, our goal is to provide the most relevant information to users. It's primarily driven by friends and family. So that's the core use case of Facebook. We want you to come to Facebook and see information that's important to you. Typically, that's the information that's important to your friends and to your family. Now, in a political election season, oftentimes what's important to your friends and your family are uh, challenging, provocative social issues. And so see that our responsibility is to make sure that when you see that content it's authentic so that you can trust the dialogue that's occurring on the platform and then to your last question we have not seen overlap in the targeting that was relatively rudimentary used in the IRA um, ads that we've disclosed and uh, any other advertiser that's been operative on the site including the the Trump campaign and just briefly I the accuracy and integrity of our results is the North Star of, of our work at Google. That goes to questions of fake news as well as to efforts to interfere with uh, ele the electoral process in the United States or anywhere around the world. Uh, I'd be happy to detail the steps we have taken and continue to take to safeguard our users from that kind of abuse and interference. With regard to the targeting of ads, the use of our platforms for advertising was relatively limited, about $4,700, uh, and generally not micro-targeted or finely targeted. Uh, but we'd be happy to, to 